Good afternoon. Most of you know that I'm currently doing a tour of duty at NSF, so feel free to uh, chat with me about NSF anytime during the conference. So this is some work that uh, a student intern and I did while we were both at HP Labs. Uh, the student's name was Iftikhar uh, Alam. He was actually a student of Sonia uh, Fami at Purdue. Uh, and you know, he, uh, he did most of this work, but uh, I'm here today to talk about it. So uh, we were extremely motivated by uh, a problem that was brought to us by some business folks at HP who wanted to try once again, because this has been done and appears to have been done every five, seven years in the past, uh, to develop a new sort of device which would be a mobile handheld printer. Uh, so we, this was motivating for us, but not sort of the, the, the end game that we had for applications. So uh, now think about what it is that we were setting out to do. So we'd like to develop a device which you could hold in your hand, put down on some kind of a surface, sort of an arbitrary surface, not necessarily just paper. Uh, so loosely restricted media. Uh, we would like to drop ink on that media as we are freehand swiping across it so we could lay down an image. Uh, so all kinds of interesting new applications in that setting, uh, things like uh, painting on walls, for depositing an image on a wall, or maybe a poster board, or you know, leave it to your imagination, uh, but not necessarily just a con kind of conventional setting. So whether or not you believe that having such a cool device uh, is sort of a killer app or not, lots of the technology we were working on uh, seems to have many different uh, alternative applications particularly in the 3D space, and 3D printers, uh, developing model input for uh, 3D systems, so lots of fun. So again, uh, we'd like a device which, as I, hear, uh, as I state here, uh, has what I call sort of scratch-off uh, lottery ticket image reveal so that you could swipe across uh, a surface. Uh, if you miss or if the device isn't dropping ink at a particular point, you go back over that surface and sort of fill in the gaps and you go down until the image is completed. So it's kind of a cool device. If you think about almost everything you look at uh, when you're staring at that big hulking thing that's the printer that you use uh, is all about getting a piece of paper into a very well-known position uh, 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 relative to some print head. That's the whole box. There's very little going on uh, that, that involves uh, uh, really ink science and um, uh, printing itself. It's all about uh, positioning. So we'd like to eliminate that uh, positioning using some kind of sort of untethered setup and lots of sensors. So uh, again, to, to build a device like this, you'd have, it has to be able to self-position. That is, it, it itself has to know where it is. Uh, it has to be able to print at speeds of, say, one to four inches per second. Uh, it has to operate in lots of different environments because I really haven't limited what the environment looks like, your home, your office, whatever. Uh, we would imagine a cover, coverage area, say, roughly the same as a sheet of paper, but uh, that's just uh, where we were started in our thinking. Uh, it's got to be able to hold it, so it's got to be small, uh, and it has to be easy to use. And of course, you know, uh, being, uh, you know, coming from sort of a business imperative, the hope was that this would be a very low cost uh, device. And I assure you, uh, based on lots of studies that I, I heard, uh, people are not willing to pay a whole heck of a lot for uh, this kind of an interesting gadget. Uh, okay, so what is sort of the technical challenge that was the crux of this work? Uh, so uh, we would like to lay down an image which is color 300 dots per, uh, uh, per inch. Uh, to do that pretty much required that we would have to be able to reliably locate uh, where the printhead is to uh, a thousandth of an inch. That's about a fortieth of a millimeter. Uh, uh, we don't really have technology that's consumer commercial that can do that today uh, that we could rely on, sensing technology that is. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we almost certainly have to know, be able to track uh, fairly finely the sort of the angle of orientation of, of the device as we're sweep, sweeping it across, swiping it across a page. Uh, and a particular challenge is what I call circuit traversal repeatability, which is the ability uh, to start at a point uh, you know, go perhaps many inches uh, back and forth across a page, go back to the original point, uh, go back to the actual original point where you started. Uh, that's kind of key. So if you look at sort of the existing sensor technology that we can pull on, things like, uh, 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 you know, make use of to, uh, to build this kind of thing, the, the sort of technology that would typically come to mind would be things like the technology associated with ultrasound styluses that are 
typically used in sort of whiteboarding or cursor-based drawing applications. Uh, if you look deeply at those technologies, uh, they are sort of an order of magnitude uh, less in a whole bunch of different categories uh, than what we would need to, uh, to just sort of deploy to, to create this, this mobile printer application and make it work. So um, uh, that's the challenge. We don't really have the technology. So this, what this amounted to uh, was us looking at various sensors and sort of pushing the state of the art to various sensor technologies, uh, which was a lot of fun to learn about, but uh, challenging when you get back to requirements of you know, sort of simplicity uh, and low cost. So I worked in the positioning part of this problem. I had lots of colleagues who were knowledgeable about uh, uh, the other sort of technology challenges around printing control and ink. Uh, they were enormous, but actually those seem uh, uh, to those colleagues sort of almost more conquerable than, uh, uh, than the, the uh, fundamental positioning problem. So there are lots of cool problems that depends on what sensors you're looking at, like you know, the, uh, as you're swiping the effect of air turbulence on propagation of ultrasound signals, uh, you kind of have to be an expert uh, in those sort of second order phenomena uh, to really be able to uh, create a device like this, which explains why uh, in the various tries that people have had over the last few decades, uh, we still don't see cheap consumer devices that can, that can do this kind of thing. So nonetheless, there are a few tries out there that I'd like to point to. So let's look at some existing technology. Start at the far right, this ink shield. So this isn't exactly what I've talked about. This is just a tethered uh, ink cartridge, which you can pick up, you know, a regular ink cartridge that you pop into your ink chip printer. Uh, and even though it's tethered with a rib ribbon cable to an Arduino com computer uh, board, you just kind of swipe it back and forth across a page and you could deposit ink. So it turns out this isn't what we would like. Uh, but it is actually a useful prototype to uh, start with to build things that we would like to, to get to. Uh, and you can actually buy it, and it's uh, cheap. Uh, a slightly uh, interesting uh, other project is to get the user out of the loop and actually build a little robot that will rock, walk back and forth across the space and deposit an image. There's one of those from Zuda Labs. Uh, it's kind of slow. Uh, you still can't buy it. Um, and it's, in, to a certain extent, I would, if I had more time, I would tell you why this probably is not the right direction you want to move in, but nonetheless, it's uh, an interesting try. Uh, and then finally, the closest sort of to the vision that we would like to create is this other uh, project, which has actually been demonstrated, but not available. It hasn't been available since, uh, since it's been demonstrated, it, what appears like uh, for more than six years. Uh, is, a, is uh, called the Print Dreams Paintbrush. They've got a very cool video uh, online if you want to take a look at it. Um, uh, but again, it's really not there. So I just want to make a comment. If you look at the, uh, the robotic printer here on the left, or it's printed out this word uh, Zuda, the name of the company. One way to think about this problem is that you have a print head, which is a lot of nozzles arranged in a re rectangular fashion. So think of this as a, as a fat paintbrush. And if you have a fat enough paintbrush, when you just kind of swipe across a page, you can lay down uh, a pretty nice uh, image uh, for, you know, sort of the width, up to the width of that paintbrush. Uh, so the fatter the paintbrush you have, kind of the nicer the image will look like in that swath. Uh, and then the real challenge is what happens when you come back and forth? Do those strokes overlap? Do those strokes leave gaps? So that's really what you have to look for in, uh, uh, when you're actually evaluating uh, uh, different systems that are out there. Okay, uh, so our hope was that we can take these conventional technologies, these sensor technologies, which are sort of not independently good enough, um, uh, and combine them, fuse them, particularly make use of complementary uh, sort of uh, uh, properties that they have, um, uh, and then um, uh, actually get to the, the, the sort of uh, key performance uh, uh, requirements that we need to develop this, uh, uh, this system. So examples are we'd like to take, uh, you know, really overclocked optical navigation sensors, in other words, mouse chips, um, uh, run them at very high counts per inch, uh, you know, get as many, uh, you know, sort of pump out as many updates from these devices as we possibly could, run them very hard. Uh, way beyond what you, you know, typically do in a regular sort of computer mouse application. Combine that with possibly a collection of different uh, uh, ultrasound transmit receive pairs so that you can get around things like obstruction uh, due to fingers. 
uh, as you're moving a device back and forth. Uh, and then throw on top of that things like some inertial uh, measurement units, basically to detect acceleration, which would be sort of out of bounds for you to be depositing any ink. Uh, so if you lift off or if you just are accelerating too fast, uh, you wouldn't be printing. So this, to understand sort of more about this, requires a deep background on sensors because you're kind of pushing the state of the uh, art on almost each of these devices. I don't have a lot of time now to, to get into that background. Uh, there's some super cool stuff. I'll just hide, you know, make a couple of uh, highlights. Um, so uh, one thing that has become invisible, referring back to our keynote uh, talk, is the sort of the underlying technology inside these optical navigation or mount sensors. They're incredibly cool. They've gotten far better with time. Um, it's fairly amazing that we don't make use of this technology in many other applications. But um, uh, if you want to use a mouse sensor uh, to do distance measurement, uh, it has uh, lots of properties, for example, the ability to operate at very high speeds and very high accelerations that are fabulous, and this technology keeps on getting better and better. And um, so um, that's worth looking at. Uh, I'm going to skip some of the details of how that works. Ultrasound uh, technologies, commercial uh, consumer ultrasound technologies, Cool, but unfortunately, they have not advanced terribly far since sort of the days of um, uh, sort of pen computing back 15 years ago. Uh, they just basically don't pump out enough positions that are accurate enough to uh, get down to the sort of resolutions that we need. So I would tell you how we would combine some of those different sensors, uh, That's, but uh, you'll have to refer to the paper. I just wanted to kind of point out how um, uh, that the fundamental problem that we addressed, and uh, I think is clear in the paper, is figuring out where you are, really knowing uh, location, ground truth, uh, in, uh, in sort of in the small. So we're, we've gotten very good at, for example, figuring out location, ground truth, how to find it in, in building positioning systems. Uh, in the small, like super small, less than a, a mil, it's a much more complicated problem. So I just wanted to share with you a couple of the different uh, systems that we had to build because you know we'd have an idea and then we'd have to test it. Well, how do you test it? Well, we'd have to build a test rig. So I don't have time to explain a lot about the test rigs, but I'll show you uh, uh, three different versions. So this is the sort of system that we built to test if we could build a positioning system for a mobile handheld printer. That's a gutted HP printer with the whole head removed, the whole paper feed removed. Um, and I have attached to it uh, on the uh, platform where the cartridges move back and forth uh, from a rail. I've actually attached a inverted uh, high performance mouse and an ultrasound receiver. Uh, and then we would basically be able to use control firmware uh, to go in and make this unit uh, fly back and forth uh, sort of above the, the printer uh, and move the receiver and move the mouse up against that, that sort of suspended rail. Uh, so this device is nice because it tells you exactly where you are to, 100, uh, to one six hundredth of an inch. Uh, so that was our ground truth system. Uh, uh, and I have lots of examples of what sort of performance is. This is displacement versus time as you're going back and forth uh, along that printer. That printer's flying back and forth, or I should say the cartridge assembly is flying uh, back and forth. And uh, let me just kind of summarize it and say, you really do want to print when, you're at, when your sort of average velocities are fairly constant uh, and not when you're, uh, you're making a fast turn at the end of a rail. Uh, and here it shows some examples of how the inability of some of the sensors we're using to actually keep up uh, with the, uh, uh, the, the actual uh, uh, physical cartridge moving back and forth at the end of the rail. Uh, they're, they're great, but they're not perfect. And, you know, if you wanted to work through acceleration and print through acceleration, you'd have to be able to uh, have many more out, uh, uh, position updates than we would uh, be able to support uh, with existing technology. So we've also looked at problems associated with uh, building test rigs associated with uh, uh, understanding rotation, because we really have to understand rotation because we need to know the angle of, uh, of the device as we're moving it back and forth across a page. Uh, because, as you know from using your mouse, the, uh, the, uh, the mouse uh, 
uh, X and Y displacements that are being registered are in the orientation of your mouse, right? So if you turn your mouse side, you know, 45 degrees, it doesn't seem to work as, uh, as it should. Uh, so we built rigs like this where we suspended uh, gaming mice over, uh, uh, over rotating platforms. Uh, and the, the graph here is actually uh, uh, an example of rotating, you know, the, the mouse output or position output as you're moving uh, this particular device in a semicircle to the right while actually turning it upside down. So it's going through that kind of motion. Uh, one last thing I'd like to talk about, uh, which is an interesting idea. Uh, you can actually use the multi-touch display in your smartphone as a, if you will, free positioning device. Uh, we created this, uh, this mechanical extension, which we called a pantograph, and we wrote some, uh, an Android app, which we call a soft pantograph, which actually reaches out uh, from, you connect this to the device that you'd like to monitor, uh, you drop a couple of, uh, you know, if you will, capacitive probes uh, on your uh, smartphone screen, and the smartphone screen is for you measuring exactly uh, where you are as you're moving your physically connected device. So it's a, te it's a, it's a, uh, a testing device, not really a, something we envision in a, uh, in a product. So just to close, um, some thoughts and next steps. So definitely work still in progress. It's very hard to do, particularly at low cost. Uh, we really have to re understand what sensor noise characteristics look like as you're sort of pushing uh, uh, the devices at their limit. Uh, there are some very cool 3D applications, which I'm not talking about today. Uh, I do want to say that a 3D test rig is actually a fantastic ground truth unit, which we should be using uh, more of when we're thinking about uh, location in the small. Uh, and there's all kinds of additional problems I haven't had the time to talk about today associated with building low latency, low jitter communications, uh, and how would you actually calibrate one of these things in the field. So I will stop there. Thank you very much.